So ladies and gentlemen, now let's get the ball rolling with the opening address by Mr. Madan Bahal, co-founder and managing director of Ad Factors PR. He will be speaking on the topic economic revival post COVID and the role of communication in amplifying and channelizing the positive business sentiments. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, thank you, Anurag ji, uh, Nawal ji, the editorial team and the events team led by Karan Bhatia uh, for inviting me to, to make this opening comment. Uh, I have been watching the uh, the video of Exchange for Media and I think uh, as a media house you should get the award for the most number of awards in the Indian Marcom, Marcom and the media space. Uh, on behalf of the PR industry, I wish to appreciate your, your, your efforts in, in highlighting the cause of the PR industry for your news coverage and your commentary and, and giving space to many leaders in the PR industry to come and voice their opinions and views. Uh, the IPRCC itself has become a very uh, uh, watched event uh, along with your other initiatives like the 30 under 30, the 40 under 40, the women leaders of public relations, the top 100 list. I think they have a fair uh, traction in the industry and thank you for, for all of these things. However, I want to make a point to, to Anurag ji and to the editorial team that I still think that the level of coverage for PR given its scale and importance as uh, Anurag ji so well articulated a few minutes ago, I think is at best meager on the exchange for media platform. In terms of audience, it's a very, very significant community, both on the comms and the agency side now. And, and you might well, in your own interests, increase the coverage because I often see an important news of the PR industry hidden in the inside pages, while even a small, significant, relatively thing uh, in, in media or, or advertising makes it to the front page and stays there for a long time. I, I hope uh, the editors. Uh, look into this uh, with the due empathy that it requires. The IPRCC 2020 is happening in February 21, a few months later than it should have happened, thanks to the pandemic. As we all know, the pandemic has kind of, kind of appended and disrupted everyone and everything. No country, no society on the planet has been spared. This time, it's a fairly democratized thing. The young and the old, the rich and the poor, the east and the west are all impacted alike. Crores of people have been infected, millions or at least a couple of million have died. Many more have suffered the economic consequences of the pandemic through lost jobs and dented incomes. And, and it's difficult for us even to comprehend the scale of this, not in once in a century, I think in once in a, a thousand years kind of an impact. Uh, of an event, Black Swan event that has impacted the whole world, including us. Uh, many sectors of the economy worldwide will take a fair amount of time to recover to their full glory and operations. Humanity, however, in general has shown, as they always, as human beings always do, great resilience in in recovering. The Indian society in particular has demonstrated uh, what might one might say characteristic strength uh, through these challenging times at, at all levels, at individual, at business, at government, at non-government, at institutional, all of them have, have stood their ground quite well through this pandemic. One might attribute this to the strength of our culture, our character, our deep philosophical roots in dealing with everything, both good and bad. And, and that's how uh, we, 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 we manage such pain and traumas a little better than maybe the rest of the world. The pandemic is nowhere close to eradication. There is still uh, a level of fear and anxiety uh, all over and life is limping back to some order. Vaccination is in progress, but, but we are some distance away from, from normalcy. However, there are 
unmistakable signs, as we all know, of economic revival. Um, stock market indices are, are, are one indicator because they kind of predict the future. Uh, Nifty is, as you all know, about a hundred percent, more than a hundred percent higher than the March lows. Actually, about 120 uh, percent. It's 20 percent higher than the pre-COVID high. Uh, eBay bills, as people in business and industry would know, are at the pre-COVID level levels. They represent the movement of goods in in the in the in the economy across the country. Electricity demand in January 2021 was at an all-time high. The housing economy is limping back. Copper, as it is fondly called Dr. Copper, because it's a great indicator of economic activity. Copper prices are at an all-time high. I can main, share many more points of or proof points of economic revival. GST collections, for example, in January at 120 lakh crores were at an all-time high. The purchase man managers index at 58.9 in October 2020 was the highest since 2008. The rural markets were exceptionally strong. Demand for tractors as, report, tractors as reported by, for example, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra and even Escorts, I think, were 50% higher in January on a year-on-year -year basis. And I think all these are all these are uh, great, great proof points of economic revival, uh, which working from home we may not have experienced as well. The economic survey presented recently uh, forecast uh, GDP growth of real GDP growth of 11% after a fall of 7.7% in FY21. So the number 11% is for FY2022. Now. While all this revival is happening, there is even more good news. And that's there are strong tailwinds for economic growth. Uh, uh, we have seen for the first time a budget in many years that has not been criticized by anybody. Or maybe I haven't heard anything. Uh, it was appreciated by, by the small and the big alike, the individual and the, and the government and, and, the, and the large industry alike and the financial sector alike. People called it a pro-growth budget. The massive public spending envisaged in infrastructure, the multiple governmental initiatives uh, across uh, capacity building in many areas and, and, and sectors, I think will go a, a large way, long way in, 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 in boosting this revival. Consider the surge in foreign direct investment. I think our reserves are now uh, approaching nearly $600 billion. It's an all time high investment, the Atman River Bharat. And the, and the, I would imagine the events in the geopolitics with the spate of investments coming or likely to come in manufacturing, driven by the attractiveness of this country as a stable, as a predictable socio cultural political system, I think will go a long way in, in seeing that this economic growth uh, is provided of further or revival is provided of further tailwind for a long, long time to come. But would would I miss out if I if I didn't mention another unique thing that's happening, and that's a tsunami of techno entrepreneurship. We, we are soon expected to have a hundred unicorns, some sixty thousand to seventy thousand startups. So I would say the best is not yet to come, but the best is about to come. It's imminent, and 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 as as a society, we must be prepared for for. Uh, for things to come, but is there a is there a, a dark lining to a silver cloud yet that's not gone away? Maybe yes. Uh, even as the uh, economic revival is happening and is strong, a certain level of uncertainty and anxiety persists as we experience it in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, we will all have to navigate this to come clear of the pandemic and together as businesses, as, as people, as individuals, as societies, as NGOs, as, as our institutions will all have to come together to come clear of this pandemic as a nation and as a society. Many of us are justifiably uncertain about freely venturing out. Even, even I have started going out a little bit personally, but one is still always a little cautious and be careful. Uh, 
some are even circumspect about the vaccines. Will the vaccine work? Will it not work on me? Will it have side effects? Which is a better one? Is Bharat better or Serum better or this better or that better? There are uncertainties we have. When will it be available? We don't know. When will everyone in India get it? We, we have some assessment, but but the, all the answers are not there. Uh, I mean, take an industry like PR or for that matter services in general. Many of our young people have gone back to their hometowns, to their families. Uh, Families are worried about sending their kids back to work about in other cities when they're alone uh, to work. Uh, consumers are uncertain about venturing out to the malls, to the shops, to the theaters, to the restaurants, in public spaces in general, or even using mass transportation, which in a city like Bombay might be a crucial bridge to getting back to work from offices or work from factories uh, in, in, a, in the real sense. Many businesses too. Are, are uncertain about resuming work as we knew work earlier, which is work from office. It's particularly true for professional services, or I would say services at large. And why that is important? Because services is the largest segment of our economy at about 55 or 56 percent of the entire economy of India's services. You know, manufacturing has gone down, and agriculture, with all the halla gulla about agriculture and farmers, it accounts for only uh, 18 percent. Of, of the Indian economy. Take of course, the numbers are much larger and, and we have to respect that. Uh, take our own situation as, as a firm, we are not entirely sure about the right right model to the in a week, should we go back two days in a week, three days in a week, should half the people go back, one quarter of the people go back, leaders go back, younger go, we don't know. And and we're all trying to come to terms with this. How, when, where, why, uh, and and many of these seemingly simple simple questions are yet complex as questions, and because they involve health and life, and that's why they get they get that extra dimension of complexity and seriousness. Now, if we were to extrapolate uh, our our problems as we face as individuals and businesses to to a larger society, so to say. Uh, for a larger world, we can sense the scale of the problem that we are dealing with. As businesses, we can understand what are uncertainties and challenges. We must make an effort to understand, as we have been trying, as to what our stakeholders are dealing with, our customers, our employees, our neighbors, our communities, our our even maybe shareholders and, and, and vendors and suppliers. They are all, all impacted with this. And therein lies, I think, the need and the opportunity for the communications profession to step in and take charge. As Anurag said, we've done a stellar job in, the, in these last few in these last few months, but uh, there is a significant role to play. It is easy or it's safe to say that we have become the bridge between business and and all its stakeholders, business at large and all its stakeholders. I think uh, we played that part part better, more effectively than all other sister disciplines in, 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 in the Marcom business or Marcom space. We have helped interpret the challenges of our stakeholders to our leaders in, in, in the client organizations or in our own organizations. We have recommended not just communications, but the right actions and behaviors that our organization should do to solve the problems of our immediate stakeholders and maybe at a larger social level. Of society at larger, or at society at large. Finally, we have created communication programs that have become the bridge between the between the world and 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 it's between the business and stakeholders. So we could say the PR industry has come out with flying colors, has done a stellar job through the pandemic, and whether you call it communications on the client side or the consulting on the PR side or all of it combined, I think I think we should feel reasonably satisfied with with the way all of us have together conducted ourselves. The communication people on the client side or agency side were like the frontline workers. And, and I would repeat what, what Anurag just said, use the expression frontline workers, and that is a good expression of business. Counseling their organizations on effectively navigating the difficult times, advocating empathy, advocating care, advocating generosity 
in dealing with with all the stakeholders and with everybody uh, uh, that the organization deals with in my humble opinion the recognition of the role and the importance of public relations or communications went up several notches through the turbulence of of the pandemic we emerged i can say confidently we emerged as a consulting profession uh, with a seat on the decision making table and and i hear many interesting and exciting stories about our own client comms heads or ccos telling us that they now have a definite seat at the table where the where the board and the and the table not only sits and talks to them about about what the right communication strategies ought to be more importantly they have become the prism for for through which all the decisions of the organization policies actions of the organization are are kind of run through before they are rolled out to the larger society to just understand that they are well connected and also perhaps preempt risks that might come with any any wrong communications or any wrong behavior the 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 scale of change uh, in that sense has been rapid and one might say the profession has taken a quantum leap on both the client side and the agency side together and 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 i'm i'm quite pleased with it the economic proof of our agility of our transformation as a, as a profession and and the continuing relevance may be stated by the fact that we were perhaps the least impacted by the pandemic compared to maybe advertising maybe maybe some other disciplines within the within the pr within the marketing industry or or marketing at large we were always the custodians of reputation we are now uh, in a decision making or in a decision counseling position where all decisions we are getting involved with that an organization takes having said this the next few months will continue we will have to be to continue to become the bridge between between a historical time divide between the organization and and its stakeholders and that historical time divide is the world will be divided into the pre covid and the post covid worlds our organizations will look to us for guidance our leaders will look to us for guidance and counsel to accelerate the recovery and restore some side some sort of a order but a, a normal word like normal and order are now an oxymoron it's, it's there's nothing going to be like a new normal it's going to be a continuous state of flux and as communication profession i think our our role has become far more dynamic and far more changing the post pandemic world will be even more exciting with new challenges and demands on our capabilities we'll have to be a continuously learning profession world like uh, com tech like ad tech or martech is becoming common world the the role of analytics and after this been enough said about all these things so i'm not going into the details of what really is changing all of us are are uh, very very well aware of uh, but these these this changing world will make a tremendous demand on our capabilities and the need to continuously evolve as a profession as an industry to serve our organizations whether on the client side or on the agency side better than we have been doing all 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 these years because there is a risk and the risk is of redundancy and 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 uh, and extinction survival actually if if we don't evolve at the pace we will have to evolve with the change of at the rate of the external environment at the pace of society that that the, at the pace of change that society is witnessing and is it fair to say that the consumer has changed more than the business the business has changed or maybe the government has also changed more than the business so if we have to actually keep pace with the customer not not my client but the client of the client and and therein represent the opportunity and the challenges uh, but for those of us who do it as individuals as teams or as agencies or as client side teams i think the the rewards are significant both in terms of professional and business growth uh, there has never been a better time 
I see rapid growth and evolution of our industry at large like never before. I'm very, very confident of that. I'm eagerly waiting to, to see the day when Indian PR becomes a billion dollar industry from an estimated $200 million that it is together. And sometimes, you know, when you go out abroad, it's embarrassing to say when people ask me, what's the size of the Indian PR industry? And I say, ah, about $200 million. $200 million? Oh, that might be the size of the Edelman or the Weber Shandwick office in New York. And then an entire industry is smaller than one office, perhaps, of the uh, largest, largest with 1.4 billion people or 1.39 billion people. I think we have to do better. And the external opportunity is, is not a problem. The barriers, if any, are not on the demand side. The barriers on the supply side. And, and we are the supply side, so we have to we have to get better. Uh, does the demand side have a responsibility? Yes, they also have a responsibility. And and the state of evolution of a of a of a supply side uh, is actually to a significant extent determined by the by the agility and the and the and the smartness of even the demand side, whether they budget the resources, whether they, whether they consider the relevance. Oh, you are very important. You are very good, but I'm only going to pay you like a priest is paid in a wedding, Dakshina. So, so, so I I urge the demand side, the client side, to navigate their paths within, considering the importance of public relations for their own even internal comms budgets and the external budgets. I think we got to do better because only then can we address the challenges, the risks, and seize the opportunities that will help. Through com communications, our competitors, our, our organizations become more competitive, whether we are competing for consumers or human resources or, or, or natural resources or capital or policy or for whatever else. And it's, therefore, it's not a favor. It, for, your, for your own good, you should create the resources. And, and, and I will never tire of making this point again and again because as an industry, we suffer from this. I'm confident that the communication industry and, and my fraternity, I'm very proud of this fraternity, will rise up to deliver on the challenges as well as seize the opportunities that the future has to offer and meet the expectations that our own organizations, our, our clients expect of us. I'm very confident that we will achieve that. The event today has a great and a very impressive lineup of outstanding leaders from from the PR industry, from the com side, the agency side, as well as many marketing folks and some CEOs as well. Their perspectives on critical subjects which are relevant to us in the times today will be helpful to all of us in, in, in navigating the uh, future, immediate future ahead of us. I wish everyone all the best and, and may you have a great day ahead of learnings and, and experiences all the very very best wishes and thank you team exchange for media once again for putting this wonderful event together thank you very much thank you so much mr behel thank you for your time and sharing your insights here with us thank you so much